Yes, yes, Kenya. Tamu sana, tamu sana, tamu sana, yes. It's just remaining some few hours before Chebukati makes the big announcement. Deadline being Tuesday, but he can make the announcement still in the next few hours. And Kenyans are anxiously waiting to know their next president. If you look at what happened today, it was a day full of drama, propaganda and lies. And interestingly enough, the lies were being peddled by some of the mainstream media. Nation Media Group being one such kind of a culprit. Kenyans woke to very sad news today, published by Nation, claiming that Kenya Kwanzaa had more elected leaders than Azimio. And that was later proved in the course of the day that was actually a lie. Azimio have more members of parliament than Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance. In the Senate, Kenya Kwanzaa beats Azimio with only one seat. Gubernatorial seat is almost 50-50. But from what was reported by Nation, they were insinuating that Kenya Kwanzaa had won all the seats, or rather had beaten Azimio in all the seats. And they were forced to apologize and to rectify that in the course of the day. So that was a propaganda that Kenyans woke up to, and it demoralized some Kenyans. If you live alone Nation, the Star Radio Africa group also had their propaganda insinuating that William Ruto had garnered over 7 million votes. That they had done their tally and William Ruto had garnered over 7 million votes. And if you look at it keenly, the aim of Radio Africa, and this, in this case the star, publishing that was to hoodwink or rather to sway the public mood to expect <coughs> not less than a William Ruto win. So I consider that as also inflammatory and incitement because when the media houses were doing the tallies, we never saw Radio Africa doing any tally. What we were seeing, we only saw Citizen, we were seeing KBC, Nation, KTN News, such kind of media, mainstream media houses, those are the ones we were seeing. And as I talk right now, from some credible sources and information, according to Citizen Tally, Raila is leading, same to KTN News. And they, are, they have not even published them because they know what it can cause, the, the anxiety and the kind of a, a feeling it can cause. So these media houses are waiting for Chebukati to make official their announcement after which they'll just also make theirs. But we are seeing Radio Africa going ahead to make their announcement, an indication that they are up to incite Kenyans. They want to incite some section of Kenyan population to reject results that will, will not be in their favor. So Kenyans walk to such kinds of drama propaganda <laughs> and such kind of antics. And also before I forget, we also saw drama at Bomas where it was a shouting match. Some people be, being found with some un, <laughs> undeclared documents entering Bomas. And we also saw some Azimio agents, the likes of Orengo, and like keep a governor Deritu Muridi being locked out of bombers. And all this created a perception that there was a deliberate attempt to sway the, the mood, the, the mood of Kenyans, or rather to sway Kenyans into thinking towards, a, a, towards the same direction, or rather towards a direction. Those things happened today, ladies and gentlemen. 
and personally from where I sit, just remaining some few hours before the announcement, I'm trying to figure it out how William Ruto can seriously beat Trailer or win this year's election. And still I'm not just getting that formula. I'm not getting that formula. Yes, I'm not getting that formula. Because if you look at the real votes, with a turnout of less than 50% on the mountain, that technically seals William, William Ruto's fate of winning this year's election. And then lastly, Raila has maintained his strongholds. He has gotten votes in all those areas. He has actually gained in some of his strongholds. And I did explain that in our previous videos. So I'm not just seeing any formula William Ruto is using to win this election. The only option William Ruto can use to win this election is through rigging. And it has been established that indeed some rigging did take place. A good case in point, a constituency, Kiambu, Kiambu constituency, Kiambu town constituency, has even been identified by IBC, where William Ruto was added 10,000 extra votes. So if you can just re re replicate that across the country, then you can see clearly that the votes we are seeing William Ruto being given, there are millions of fake votes from, that, <coughs> from William Ruto's votes. And with all these allegations and even proofs that indeed rigging took place, I don't see any need or any reason at all why William Ruto, or rather why IBC, through Afola Chebukati, should then go ahead to declare or announce such kind of a person as a winner. That will be like over thwarting, or, or that will be like thwarting or overturning the will of a majority of Kenyans. It will just be like a coup to me. Because it's clear, William Ruto only managed votes from the mountain and from his Kalenjin Rift Valley. So technically, I'm not just seeing any formula William Ruto can win this election apart from that of rigging. And even already that rigging aspect has been established a bit. I don't think it's fair for Chebukati to then go on and announce such kind of a person as, as the president-elect. He's not just adding up, ladies and gentlemen. And then if you look at William Ruto again, there is also a very, another interesting aspect. Just look at all the experienced politicians in Azimio. Very experienced politician. In fact, Azimio also boasts of the system and the president. If William Ruto can um, twist all that, eh, all those leaders, Mm. If William Ruto can um, twist all those leaders to a point, to an extent, he even rigs votes on, <coughs> in President Uru Kenyatta's backyard, then that clearly shows us the nature and character of William Ruto. That's not a person that is fit to lead any nation on earth. If he can um, twist the government while he does not have that system. He's not in control of that system. If you give him that system now, he's a person who can do wonders with it. He's a person who is going to be a demigod. Kenya most likely is going to be reduced into another kind of a Uganda or a Zimbabwe under Robert Mugabe. That's what I'm seeing here, ladies and gentlemen. If you could um, twist the government and all those leaders, <laughs> hmm? that shows that is, should he get that power, then the nation is done. He's going to do anything he wants, and nobody will talk. Nobody will talk. That's, that is a good example of a dictator. He is going to be a demigod. That's why I still maintain, personally, 
that Ruto and Rigathi Gashagwa are not fit to hold any public office. And just as I've been saying in my previous videos, the president, President Uru Kenyatta, if you are listening to me, save this country from this kind of a looming embarrassment. Let me leave it there, ladies and gentlemen. In case you are watching us for the very first time, but so far you have not yet subscribed, kindly subscribe, give this video a like. And to our fans and subscribers here, I'm very much humble, very grateful for the kind of support you are giving me here. God bless you, God bless Kenya. To any other person, that's the kind of analysis we do here. We don't beat about the bush. We go straight and to the point. We call it as it is without fear or favor. God bless you. God bless Kenya.